Okie dokie, here we go with uh, another form, point slope form. So basically where we're at now is we looked at this y equals mx plus b thing, right? That's what they call slope intercept form, often called slope y intercept form. But this is slope intercept form because you're given a slope and an intercept. Okay, we have another form of the equation that is used in a different situation. Okay, it's used also to find the equation of a line given a point and a slope, but it's when we can't do it any other way, okay? And it's derived from the slope formula. It's derived from the slope formula, which is basically saying that m is your change in y, basically, right? So you take one y, subtract the other to show you the difference, right? And then you take the two x's and look at the difference between them, and that's your change in x. So that's how we find our slope. Now, if you rearrange this, okay, if you rearrange this in a way that you said, okay, well, if I have, uh, let's just use y minus y1 now. Same thing, right? It doesn't matter if it's y2 minus y1. It's just two x's and two y's. Now, think about algebra and how would we get rid of this denominator? Well, what we would end up doing is multiplying it by that denominator. When you multiply that out, you get m times x minus x1 is equal to y minus y1 because that would end up canceling with that. And this is indeed the formula that we're looking at, but the other way around. Okay, so this is our point slope form. And what it's used for is it's used for finding the equation of a line given a point and a slope. Now let's just look at a couple things here, okay? Let's look at a couple things. If I gave you a point and a slope. You have a couple different options here, okay? If I gave you a point at negative 3, negative 2, and said that there was a slope uh, of 1 half, right? Minus 3, minus 2, a slope of 1 half. Let's just zoom into this real quick here. If I said a slope of 1 half, that means you'd go up 1 over 2, up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, and you got a pretty good idea of what's going on here. You know that the slope is one half. I just got that. If I gave you the y-intercept, well, can you find the y-intercept? The y-intercept's a little tricky to see, but it's seeable still. So you can see that that's negative one half. And I asked you, if I asked you for an equation, you'd say one half x minus one half. That would be a good way to solve it. Okay. However, if you do not have that uh, if you can't find the y-intercept, then you need another option. And that option occurs right here. y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. And we plug those numbers in. So first of all, my slope is 1 half. What's your x1? What's your y1? That's the given point, right? Well, the x1 is right here. That's minus 3. The y1's right here. That's minus 2. And what we do is we plug these values in to this equation. So y minus, well, a minus 2 equals m, which is 1 half, x minus the x value, minus 3, and you're off to the races. What you have to see now is that you need to simplify it a little bit. So y plus 2 is equal to 1 half x plus 3. And this is where the algebra comes, to, comes into play, folks, okay? You need to be able to rearrange this. And that means that you have to be able to multiply this out. That's 1 half times x. And then you go 1 half times 3 as well. And if you can't see that, guys, you have to work out fractions, okay? That's going to end up being 3 halves. Now, you're still not quite done because you want to get that y away from, or you want to get that 2 away. So you subtract 2, you subtract 2. So I'm going to have 1 half x plus 3 halves minus 2. But it's minus 2 over 1. If you want to combine fractions, you need to have a common denominator. So what's the 2 over 1 going to turn into? 4 over 2. And then if you look at it again, you're almost done. Plus 3 halves, or sorry, let's get rid of that. I'm looking at something else here. So let's simplify this uh, plus three halves minus four halves what you're going to end up with one half x minus one half and funnily enough that is what we actually got off our graph too okay so why not use the graph you ask 
you can if you want. I'm not saying don't use the graph, but there's going to be situations where it's not that easy to use the graph because you won't be able to find the y-intercept. So you're going to need to use this formula right here. Okay? Now, um, that is essentially it. Now, what would be a question, say, if I said, all right, a point passes through, or a line passes through two points, S, which is 5 and 7, and T, which is negative 2 and 1. Find the equation of the line that passes through these two points. Okay? Well, there are two things that you need to find the equation of the line. You need to find a slope, and you need to have a point. Well, we've already got the point covered. I can use either of these points. If you wanted to graph it, no one's saying you can't graph it, right? Um, let's turn this over here. One, two, three, four, five, and then seven up here. And then I've got negative two and one. So here's my... Now, if you wanted to find the slope, you could find that pretty easy off of the graph, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's six over... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six sevenths is my slope. And now you have a point. You can pick either of these points because you can see that the line is going through both of those points. I like positive numbers, so I'm going to use that. Now, if you couldn't find the slope that way, well, then you could do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It doesn't matter which you call point number one and which you call point number two as long as you stay consistent. So y2 is 1 minus 7, right? y2 minus y1. x2 minus x1 is negative 6 over negative 7, which is 6 over 7, which is the same thing. Okay, so now we have the slope. You could, if you had the y-intercept, you could write out the equation in this form right now. You could probably figure out if you had some logic and some reasoning skills, but... We don't, a lot of us, so what we need to do is use this formula right here, okay? So now you have your m is equal to 6 sevenths. You have your x1 is equal to 5, and you have your y1 is equal to 7. So we plug them in. y minus 7 equals 6 sevenths, x minus 5. Boom, you're almost done. What you need to do now is multiply it out. y minus 7 is equal to 6 sevenths x now we're going 6 over 7 times negative 5 over 1. So negative 30 over 7. I know you don't like fractions, folks. That's why we're talking about doing these over and over. Practice, practice, practice. So now I'm going to add 7 to this side, add 7 to this side. Minus 3 over 7, 30 over 7, plus 7. 1. Now what we have to do is this. Okay, simplify this. So that's 30 over 7 plus what over 7? How many 7s? Well, 7 over 1 will turn into, hopefully you can see that's times 7 times 7, so 49 over 7. This gives me uh, x. This gives me plus 19 over 7. And this is the final answer that I would want in this case. All righty. So lots of different ways. We can't forget perpendicular lines and parallel lines. If I wanted a line perpendicular to this, I'd have to find uh, a perpendicular slope, right? Which would be negative 7 over 6. If I wanted to find a line parallel, I'd have to use this slope that was already given. Lots of different questions that we can ask, folks. This is the basic notes right here. And there we go. We'll work on as much as we can in class, folks. Okay.